AMT, the Association for Manufacturing Technologies Office of Strategic Innovation, along with Virtual Photons Electrons, is proud to introduce the OSI Roundtable with your host, Dave Edstrom. Well, this is the first Office of Strategic Innovation Roundtable, and our very first guest is John Turner of FA Consulting and Technology. And John has a very long and distinguished background in machine tools. And um, John, before we jump into today's topic, which is going to be about doing assessments when you show up to plant, what things that you look for, and how MT Connect can, can play into that environment. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself for those folks who may not know John Turner? Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, I have uh, a little over 30 years experience in the uh, machine tool industry and general fa factory automation overall. Uh, most of that time with uh, GE and GE Fanuc, uh, where I had responsibility for the mostly the technical teams uh, and the service teams and some product development groups uh, over the years with um, focus on machine tools and machine tool productivity. John, could you talk about the IMTS 2008 MT Connect black box that you created? Uh, for the show in 2008 put together a agent adapter in a uh, box that could be generically plugged uh, on the front of any of the FANUC controls that had a ethernet port and allowed that control to produce MT Connect data and tie to any uh, compatible application. John, could you talk about what framework that you have when you show up at a plant and what are the typical questions that you like to ask? Throughout my career, I spent a lot of time working with not just the machine tool builders and the, the control suppliers uh, and the users themselves, but worked with a lot of industry organizations that have supporting roles in the manufacturing uh, world. So whether that is uh, Step NC and its role in trying to develop new programming techniques, uh, I had an opportunity for a couple years to run a uh, SBC and quality business and do some early uh, uh, OEE work in this market. So with that kind of background, I like to take a holistic view of the manufacturing process because one of the things I find is that no one facility uh, works exactly like another. No one facility has the same set of problems that another has. And, and the priorities of the management team of what they're trying to solve are typically usually uh, quite different. So the first thing I do is go in and listen. I try to listen a lot, try to understand the environment of the facility. And then with that, then try to work cross-functionally with all the key players that influence the manufacturing process, whether that's the operators, the maintenance people, uh, the production or industrial engineering folks, uh, and the management team to take a, a complete assessment of uh, both technologies that they already have, uh, maybe uh, adjunct technologies that would be easy to add to their facility to help solve some of their problems, or just to look at uh, operational things as to how they might even look at uh, changing sequence of events uh, in their production process just to lessen some uh, uh, bottlenecks that may be in their process that come from just the familiarity. Sometimes it's just an outside view it has a lot to do with seeing some things that you don't normally see uh, when you look at the same issue day in, day out as you would um, looking at your own facility. John, last month I wrote an article for the IMTS Insider titled, Why Would Lord Kelvin Love MT Connect? And one of the interesting points that I learned speaking to academic and industry experts is that the average machine shop monitors only four to five percent of machine tools are stated more accurately only four to five percent of the machine tools around the globe are monitored when you go to a shop could you talk a little bit about data capture and the importance of that 
in your advice? The input, measure the output, and everything in between is just the uh, your overall efficiency without really breaking your processes down in more detail to figure out uh, where there may be capacity opportunities in your plant, uh, where there may be um, uh, process changes that could impact uh, product quality. Uh, you know, we take at, do error proofing uh, kind of uh, projects that basically t reduce the opportunity to put error into your process. And overall, I think the, um, the answer is tied to the environment of your, overall what you're able to do is look at the environment as it applies not just to the manufacturing process, but also the business management of, of the individual plant. And then from that, determine a strategy to solve particular problems that are of greatest concern to that particular facility. Um, as we had said in, initially, there is no pat answer as to what each facility needs, and they're all trying to solve different problems. John, could you discuss OEE, overall equipment efficiency? Sure. Um, usually, the whole idea of productivity and efficiency is at the root of almost every discussion. Um, in the discrete parts manufacturing world, OEE is not typically a approach that has been used in the past for an analysis of their processes. Although it is a very effective way to analyze processes. Um, usually the question starts out, uh, I need, I'm trying to assess whether or not I need to buy new equipment or I've got a problem, I can't get a, enough parts off this particular production line or a bottleneck at a certain part in their production. And there are assumptions be made based on people's uh, experiences as to how to solve those problems. The thing I find, though, is that very seldom is there data backing up those uh, opinions and, and experiences. Um, so many times, using the cap or the approach of OEE will allow you to get very specific data, and many times find that you have capacity within your existing facility where you can actually increase production and or where you can gain more capability out of your existing process by changing uh, sequence of events within the process, uh, by looking at uh, sometimes an operator is doing things perfectly by the book, if you would, but he doesn't have all the tools he needs to do his job effectively. Uh, a lot of times we'll find that maintenance issues are standing in the way of, of getting the most out of a particular uh, piece of equipment. And by using the OE methodology of collecting data on both the, where you're looking at really three different issues here. You're looking at, of the planned production time, how much of that time is the equipment actually available? Of the time that it is available, how effective is it during that period of time? And then what's your yield off that particular line? You know, are, are the parts that you're producing actually ending up being usable parts? And when you look at those factors and then use the OEE tools to f further break down each of those to understand where your losses are, um, one of the ways we like to describe the, the process is it's like a leaky pipe. All the way along that pipe, you're losing a little bit of, of your capability. So the whole idea of using the e OEE tools is to understand where those leaks are, how big each of those are, and then what steps you can take to plug these together. Um, certainly there are some that are way off the scale on both ends, 
But if you really look at the mean, it's more in the, the area of that 20, 25%. So what that means is if you can find a way to reduce the losses by as little as 10%, you're looking at a 40% increase in your productivity. The leverage is tremendous. But most people aren't prepared to take a look at a stable process and say, what, what can be changed in this very stable environment to make it better? Because they're in a, a comfort zone that they have operated in this method for a long time, and they've made tons of small changes to get this working just the way they want it. But the, the reality is, is that there's probably tremendous uh, benefits to gathering data and making those changes. Now on the big brother aspect of it, uh, the real key part here is to make sure everybody is on the same page as to why they're collecting the data and what they're gonna use the data for. Uh, certainly, operators can be very sensitive to uh, the data you c collect. Um, if it's a, a manufacturing engineering group collecting the data to look at uh, uh, information that they can use to uh, assess whether they need new equipment, um, the, the production management team may be very sensitive to that because the first thing that may surface is the fact that they are not, that there's opportunity to generate more output from the existing equipment. John, this reminds me of two scenarios. When I was at Sun Microsystems, often a sales rep would bring me into a situation where they believed the customer needed to purchase additional hardware. After speaking with the customer, what became very apparent is what they really needed was a consultant to take an overall look at what they were doing. And many times this would save them tremendous amounts of money without having to purchase new hardware. And the sales reps sometimes didn't like it, but the customers certainly appreciated it over the long term. And that's what obviously we cared about. The other situation reminds me of is my father who would rather spend $950 on the Big Bertha Unobtainium 19 plus plus driver as opposed to spending $40 with the Pro for a half hour lesson. And when I always ask him jokingly, if the goal is to have a lower score, isn't a better bang for the buck going and getting lessons? Uh, but that logic obviously doesn't always apply in life. Is there a project that you could discuss Project I just finished up uh, this past fall. Um, I actually uh, went into the plan on three different occasions um, and made sure that in that process that we met with the IT people, the manufacturing engineering folks, the operators, the maintenance people, the production engineering people, and the shift management people. Um, because it was important that all of them get a chance to express what they wanted out of a project and, and they all have particular things that they are trying to achieve. Um, you know, for a lot of times it's the operator seeing it as an opportunity to, uh, make sure that his voice is being heard. Um, so making sure that are, are reaching out and bringing all these people together and, and making sure that their particular interests are all addressed in the overall scope of the project helps to bring a environment together that is one of cooperation instead of uh, fear and potentially even finger pointing that come out of projects if you don't bring a broad group of people together. Because um, the original comment about Big Brother, there's always that fear when you have only part of the team involved in a discussion or involved in a project. 
Could you talk about the scenario where you're at a plant or a shop and you discover that they're really not taking advantage of all of the features of a given piece of equipment or a specific controller? Machine controls have a lot of capability um, that is been built in in response to requests from end users and other people in the industry uh, that are specific to a particular application area. But many times they're broadly applicable to lots of different applications. So if you think of the flow of a controller uh, through its life cycle, uh, it goes from the control manufacturer to a machine builder. Machine builder adds his pieces to it that are important to uh, run his particular machine. He, he then passes it on maybe through a distribution channel of some sort who uh, starts to bring some of the process pieces into the solution that's eventually installed on a user's floor. Well, all along that process, the pieces that get added are those that are important to the people at those steps in the process. So when, um, you know, a machine builder is really focused on getting the most out of his machine, but he may not be focused at all on the, uh, the maintainability of that machine uh, or some of the uh, features that might be of a lot of interest to a user, but have in how he would maintain or support that machine, but may not have incremental value to the builder. So often there are features then that are buried in that machine that are not used or, or have not been activated. So what I do is try to work with the, the end user to identify the capabilities both in his machine and the ability to, to interface to other process equipment around the machine that help improve his process. Um, one recent example included uh, using a maintenance feature in a, in a control that allows uh, to track different parts of the machine as to when preventive maintenance features or functions are needed on it. So that there was a, you were actually doing your PM planning based on the results of the process instead of a ca calendar uh, being checked off back in a system back in an office someplace. Um, another example uh, is where uh, you know, quality data was being collected and manually uh, put on a piece of paper that shipped along with the parts. When the quality system actually had a uh, communication capability where that data could be collected automatically. Um, but that feature had never been implemented and wasn't even known by the users being a feature of, the, of their own quality system. So what I like to do is try to dig into the overall, both the equipment and the process around it to find those pieces that are being underutilized and, and see how to either use those tools more effectively to solve problems or how to bring two or three tools together so that they can automatically uh, solve problems that are being done and replace manual operations that anytime you can take a manual operation and replace it with something automatic, you reduce the opportunity to induce error into your process. And that usually means better parts and more parts. When you are at a plant and, and you've gone through and, and you've, you've had the meetings, uh, you, you've gathered data, um, and you've talked to all the different individuals, and they really want to make a, a lasting change, so they are interested in, uh, let's say, monitoring, uh, gathering that data, uh, and continue to have a feedback system. When you start talking to them uh, about different types of monitoring 
uh, strategies, and let's say they have a variety of, of equipment. Can you sort of take me through uh, the conversations that you're um, having with, with individuals and, and what are the, the different areas that you're bringing up to them that they should really consider going forward, essentially getting, getting the data off the different manufacturing uh, equipment? One of the things that ends up killing many projects and, and why projects don't get off the ground and move forward, particularly in the area of data collection, is that usually the scope of the project grows too big so that it becomes a major uh, investment and a major effort to get a project started. So what I try to do is work with the customer to identify a starting point, a small point that uh, addresses one piece of their problem so that they can begin the process of collecting data in a simplistic way without uh, the investment and the resource commitment that would go on or be required uh, to, to tackle the entire problem at one time. So by taking an incremental approach, it allows the customer to gain information, gain experience, and, and gain benefits for one problem. And then using that experience, then expand his application to address other problems. And, and this is one of the areas why I think MT Connect is so important to, to the marketplace, is that in the traditional communication systems uh, that have been used in plants uh, for years, every time you change an application, every time you add a second or third application, you basically have to repeat a lot of the engineering work that you do the first did the first time. So your costs of upgrading and maintaining an application are pretty high. With MT Connect, basically we define the data at the machine so that it can be used commonly by all applications. What that allows us to do is to take this incremental approach. Um, start out with an application maybe looking at um, uh, just the, the usage of resources on a machine that's used for preventive maintenance scheduling, and then turn around and as soon as we get that running stable, look at adding some other application that's using exactly the same data, but then is looking at spindle utilization and overall efficiency on the machine. And it becomes very easy to do this using MT Connect since we don't have to redefine the data each time because MT Connect produces that data uh, in a format that is usable by each of the applications. Um, and in its standard format, that data is in the context of the machine and the process so that the um, adaptation of it to different uses becomes very easy. Could you talk a little bit about what happens after you leave a customer and what are the typical next steps? If we can get a well-defined and controlled scope project, implement it and showing results. Uh, you know, there's nothing in any environment that will generate excitement and, and draw people into projects like success. So the, the real key is to, to get the project implemented, get the, start showing some benefits, and then usually the first the next set of responses you see is other people saying, you know, if I could get, if I could only do, they, you know, and they start building their own momentum on top of uh, the existing uh, project. So the project kind of takes on a, a life of its own once people start to see that there, there are benefits and that it can be implemented in a way that, um, 
it can help them in their day-to-day -day job. Um, you know, going back to your point on MT Connect uh, and why, and some of the things that why it's different from some of the sales pitches you've seen on other uh, technologies. Um, the biggest thing is it applies to expanding a project and and taking a, an initial project and and moving it forward is the fact that in the case of MT Connect, there's one fundamental difference from it and all other communication systems. And that is uh, what I always call the pointing function. Because uh, there's really three parts of the communication. It's how, how do you move the data from one device to another? What does the data mean? And then the hardest part and where all the engineering goes in and all the maintenance costs go in on applications is what I, is this pointing function? Where is that data in the device that I'm trying to get it from? And MT Connect moves that function from the application down to the device. So basically at the device, we identify that data once and it's used by all the different applications. So once we get one application, we move on to a second or a third application that's solving a different problem. The data is already predefined for us. In a historical way of doing it, and what's always stopped projects from moving forward in the past is once I solve one problem, the second I tried to solve a second problem, I had to go back and recreate much of the work I did solving the first problem because I still then had to go back, take my new application and redefine it to uh, gather much of the same data I did in the first place. With MT Connect, since the definition of the data is now moved to the device, all those costs associated with going back and rediscovering that data are eliminated. And that's one of the things that allows these projects to move in an incremental way is that the, the cost of moving from step one to step two to step three is greatly reduced. Thanks, John. That was great. As we are coming up to the end of our first Office of Strategic Innovation Roundtable, would you mind taking just a little bit of time to tell us more about your company, FA Consulting and Technology, and exactly what you guys do? Okay, sure, Dave. Um, basically, uh, when the GE and Fanuc uh, joint venture separated uh, at the end of uh, 2009, um, I had the opportunity to take on something I've always wanted to do for a long time, and that was to uh, take my experiences and my skills and, and, and really go out and work with companies to help them improve their own processes. So, so that's what I've done. Um, I've had a great opportunity to work with a number of fine companies just in the last year, um, but basically, um, Everything I am focused on is shop floor productivity. So whatever it takes to look at shop floor productivity, whether it's process changes, whether it is people issues and training issues, whether it is equipment utilization. Um, I try to, as I said, take a holistic look at that. Um, and then in addition to that, I've had the opportunity to work close with the MT Connect Institute and help work with a lot of the working groups that are trying to expand the standard. And at the same time, I'm trying to stay close to other industry initiatives so that I can bring technologies from a wide, uh, wide view to a production facility and uh, share experiences with them that their own people haven't had the opportunity to get out and, and interface sometimes to the, the broader industry that you know I can bring those experiences help them move a step forward and then um, turn them loose and let them uh, uh, grow and prosper on their own. And um, it's been a, uh, a, a tool that's, or a process and a tool set of tools that seem to work really well. And um, we've had some uh, a pretty successful uh, efforts here in the first uh, year and a half and um, looking forward to working with lots of lots of companies on the same basis uh, as we go forward. How can folks reach you, John? Where are you located? Yeah, 
I'm located in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, being kind of central on the eastern seaboard of the U.S., it makes it pretty easy to uh, get access pretty much up and down the east coast or even into the uh, central part of uh, uh, areas like Ohio and uh, uh, Indiana. Uh, many of these areas are uh, drivable, so it makes it easier for me to, to get access to plants and spend quality time with customers and be very flexible in, in how we spend that time. So um, as far as geography, that's where I'm located. The best way to reach me is uh, I carry my cell. I'm usually uh, available seven days a week from early morning till at close to midnight every night. Uh, I guess that's one of the advantages of running your own business that you're never away from it. Uh, and that is 434-987-4430 or you can Drop me an email at john at Ravana Gear. That's R I V A N N A G E A R dot com. Well, great, John. Um, I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to go through and to share with us exactly what what you do when you show up and you are doing an assessment. You know what type of questions that you're asking, who you're meeting with. Um, what the, the type things that you're seeing. And then, of course, as the president chairman of the board at MT Connect Institute, I always love it when somebody mentions MT Connect. So thanks a lot, John.